how you doing everyone out there on the internet? Wazoo here and it's time for another Spring Boot API tutorial. Today we are going to look at building an avatar API with Java Spring Boot. Sounds exciting, let's get to it. We are going to look at our game plan. First we're going to be generating our project with the Spring Boot with the help of the Spring Boot initializer at start.spring.io. Standard stuff. Next we're going to look at adding our project over to Git. Then we're going to be setting up local H2 database support, which is really, it's a really easy and handy, convenient database to look at um, while you're debugging and troubleshooting any project that you're working on with Spring Boot. Next, we're going to look at creating our avatar model and repository to access that model with the database. And with the help of that, we're going to be looking at the H2 console, which is a special web console into our h2 database it's really cool i think you like it next we're going to look at setting up a rest crud controller to access our avatar domain model and crud as you might remember uh, stands for create read update and delete operations so we'll be putting that into our controller finally we'll be testing our what our said web controller with the help of curl and postman I think it'll be really cool and exciting. Let's go ahead and do it. So here we are on start.spring.io. I'm sure you've seen this site plenty of times before. I highlighted it in my last video, but as it is a great starting point for all Java Spring Boot projects, let's go through another one here. So we're gonna be choosing a Maven project. We're gonna be using Java, Spring Boot version 2.4.5. But again, you can just use whatever the latest current version of Java Spring Boot is. You should be able to use it. Okay, and let's give our project a name. Let's call it com.wazooinc. And then for an artifact name, we'll just call it avatar api. Avatar dash api. Let's try that out. Okay. And a Spring Boot project for an avatar API. Hooray! Okay, so here's the package name that, that we're going to be going with, api. We're going to be packaging it up as a jar, and we're going to be using Java 16. Okay, and over here on dependencies, we are going to be using Spring Boot DevTools, Lombok, which I'll show you how cool and handy that comes in, uh, we'll be using Spring Web for our REST controllers and just general web access API. Uh, we'll be using Spring Data JPA and H2 Database. And let's see. I think that's everything. Well, we can always add in whatever we want afterwards. Uh, we might tackle adding a security layer, but maybe not. Okay, just go ahead and hit that magic generate button. Hey, welcome back. Okay, so as you can see, I've extracted the avatar API application that we generated at the start.spring.io website. I've put that on my local machine and I've opened it up in Visual Studio Code. So I've got the project open now and we'll go through some of the basic files that um, you may want to familiarize yourself with when you're working on a Java Spring Boot project. First, of course, there's the pom.xml file and this is there to, this is our Maven, um, central Maven file, which basically defines all of our uh, dependencies and libraries that, we're, that we plugged in on the website. You can see here we're using, we're referencing the H2 database, Lombok, and the DevTools web and the starter data JPA. Next, or the only, okay, uh, as, as you might remember from my other video, uh, we are, this is the empty application.properties file, which again, um, if you remember, it's a way of uh, configuring, providing some configuration for Java Spring Boot, the server. So we'll take a look at that shortly. Next, we've got the entry point for every Java Spring Boot application, which is using the annotation at Spring Boot application. And this is just in our source main Java com wazoo inc slash avatar API folder. 
So we'll be building out a lot of the a lot of these folders as we add our avatar API models. Uh, but first things first, let's go ahead and start everything up um, with the help of this handy dandy uh, convenient extension in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so let's let it start up and do its thing. Okay. Okay, cool. So it looks like Tomcat started up okay in port 8080. Let's go ahead and check that out in a browser. Hooray, it worked. This is a good sign. It means the server is up and running and receiving web requests. Okay, so we can hit the handy dandy stop button there. Okay, and now let's go to the command line. And what we're going to do is take a look at um, adding this project to Git. So I'm going to go, so now I've opened up a command console, a terminal window, if you will, and I'm going to go into where I extracted my project folder and we'll go ahead and add that into Git right away. So I'm in CD users, downloads, avatar API, whoops. Forgot my username there. Okay. Downloads Avatar API and I think this is the right one. Okay, it is. So to start off, um, we'll do an ls.al and look at all the look at all the source files that we've got for our project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a handy dandy git in it. Initialize this git repository, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and add everything into, into git, into source control. So I'm gonna tag it with a message, initial commit, but you can tag it with whatever you want. This is just, we know everything is working up, up to this point. We've just tested it out. And so now we're just gonna make sure we've got a, a fallback in case we make a mistake in what we're building in our project. Okay, so first what I'm going to do is uh, show you some handy convenient um, methods in the uh, back in our project here. So we're going to open up the application.properties file. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the server port to listen in on port 3000 instead of the default port of 8080. But I'm going to show you first how cool and handy this will be in uh, in um, uh, Visual Studio Code. So you can see, okay, I've started our server up again. And, okay, everything is starting up. Okay, Tomcat listening on port 880. So now we're going to update the properties file and I'm going to show you what happens next. Okay, so change default server port. So I think it's server.port is 3000. I think that's the right one. Okay. And then if I save and notice our handy dandy server restarts for us and is listening in on port 3000. Isn't that cool? So any changes that we make to our configuration and the Visual Studio Code uh, extension will pick that up and, and restart itself. Really convenient for us. Okay. So next we're going to look at um, updating some of the logging levels. Uh, right now we've got everything um, kind of on an info, you can see here info messages, um, some basic ones, but we want to expand some of that logging so that when we're working with our avatar model and debugging anything that might be going wrong, we'll be able to, to display it in the console and see how it's coming out. So what we're going to do is uh, define some logging logging levels. So logging level dash, dash web dot web equals debug. So we're going to turn on debug the debug logging level for all of the web classes um, that will that handle requests and process uh, everything uh, at a system web system layer. Okay, and then we're going to open up logging for our custom objects that we're building 
that we will be building tar API equals debug. Okay, so again, same idea. So all of our all of our objects that we'll be creating in this project, I, we've now set and, and enabled the debug logging, um, the debug logging levels, so that now any messages that we may want to display to help us out will, will show up in the console. Okay, and then we are going to start configuring our H2 database. Okay. H2 database. So we've got a few more. We've got a few more configuration parameters to set up here. So maybe cut to when I get all this finished. Okay. So as you can see, I've entered our um, the H2 database configuration variables that we'll need. Uh, we're defining a URL of a local file. We're we're going to be storing the database locally and as a file. Um, and we'll go into more details as we keep using this. Okay, we're specifying a driver class name of our H2 driver. Uh, we're providing a username and password of admin and min, and this is for when we, op we use the console, which I'll go through in just a few minutes. And next we're defining our database platform, which is just using H2 dialect. Um, these, like, database platform, driver class names, and URL will slightly be changing depending on what database you use. So if you decide to use MySQL or uh, Postgres, then these are the configuration options that you'll have to look up in Google and um, change from these. But it's not really a big deal. Um, okay, so now we'll define, we'll enable the console. Spring.h2 Okay, and we will add in a special flag to automatically drop and recreate the tables every time we restart the server. And this will be really important when we're just starting out here in development, uh, because we might we we will be changing our domain model quite a bit um, as we go through this video, and so it'll help and and keep a lot of er errors down or not errors problems with the database. Um, by just blowing it away and recreating it every time you restart the server. So for that, we are going to be using JPA hibernate DDL auto equals create. Okay, so we've got everything up and running. So first, let's verify that our server is listening on port 3000. Hooray, it's there. That's pretty cool. Okay, next, we are going to be looking at the H2 console. So if you, okay, and we can see here that we've specified the same JDBC URL that we have in our in our properties file. Okay, and then where for username and password, it's admin admin, which is what we've defined in that config configuration file. Excellent. So here is our web view, a web console view of our local database. So as you can see, we don't have any real tables in it right now. Um, these ones that you see on the left-hand side are kind of default, default objects that are created with every H2 database. But right now it's empty because we haven't created our avatar model yet. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Okay, so we'll leave the server up and running and it should restart for us as we add our objects. <clears throat> okay. So first, we are going to create a new package called models. Uh, models, oops, not Moodles. And then we are going to do our avatar. Okay. So let's bring that over here so that we can see it. Okay. So first, what we need to do is Define that it is a new that it that it's an entity because it is part of the JDB JPA um, objects of Spring Boot. So don't worry, it'll start to make sense as we go through it. Okay. And so in in Visual Studio Code, it's Control dot and that oops. Control dot and that'll import our the any of the any of the packages or dependencies that we reference in our code. 
So we're going to be going through some um, annotations that Hibernate and Spring Boot use in our data model. And I'll put them all in first, and then I'll kind of go through and explain them. OK, so first. Strategy is generation type dot auto auto. And then we've got okay. And then private string name and then getter setter private string type okay and then we've got um, getter and setter for our health points health points and getter setter oops for mana points. Okay, and I think that's all we need to get started with. Um, we are going to do a, um, like I said, I'll go through this when we, um, when I finish getting everything in. Okay, and so let's do an override, public string to string, and we are going to do a ID equals plus ID plus name equals plus name. Okay, we need string. Single quote strings, okay. Okay. And then we're gonna do type. So don't worry, again, I'll go through this. Okay, and then we're gonna do we're gonna do health points. Okay. Here we gotta fix this. Sometimes it tries to help, the editors try to help you by putting in extra quotes. Never seems to really help. Okay. Health points equals health points plus. Okay, and then we've got mana points. Mana points, whoops. Mana points, and then we have the end bracket. Okay. So it should be restarting and regenerating the, the database based on the new object that we've just created. Okay, and let's scroll down to the bottom, and there doesn't seem to be any obvious errors. Okay, so let's go back and look through what we've done here. So we've used the entity annotation that Spring Boot provides to um, make it make Spring Boot aware that we're working with a data model, uh, which is translated into a an actual table in our database. Okay, and we're generating a an ID, we're using the annotation for ID, which is our primary key for this data model. And we're giving it a um, it's basically a, we're using the annotation for a generated, um, generated value, which means, oh, it doesn't look like it resolved property there. Okay. Import. Okay. Perfect. Which basically it just, it's an auto generator. So every time we, we every time Spring Boot creates a new object, uh, using this data model, it'll generate a new ID based on um, whatever whatever latest ID number it has. It's it's typically a sequence. 
So the IDs of our, of our objects will be things like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Okay, and then uh, Lombok, when we used Lombok in the setup, it comes in really handy in these um, objects when it will fill in the getter and setter functions for us, which can make, um, it really cleans up how the class looks. Uh, normally, we, we would have to write, you know, get, get, value, get name, return name, set name, taking in a string as input, which will then um, match, it'll, it'll set the name, name property to the name that we're passing into it. So instead of needing to write that for all of our domain, domain variables, we can just use Lombok, getter and setter to do that for us. So we've got a name, which is our character name, our type, which is our, um, the, 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 I guess you could maybe think of it as a job type of our avatar. So things like uh, paladin or thief, mage, wizard. Um, I didn't want to use, I know in most fantasy setups, it's known, they're known as a class, but uh, class is usually a reserved word in just about every programming language there is. So I've, I've tried, I've settled on using type to reference that instead. So if you're, if you're trying to mentally map um, a character sheet from your favorite fantasy game, um, then this would be the, the class. In fact, I'll just put that as a comment. The class of our avatar. Okay, and then health points. Um, this is how much health our character has, mana points, how much mana they have, and we're using this string, this override to for string to help us um, log how this class looks, or how like how this looks in the database in the system. So let's go ahead and save it, which will restart our server. And because of our configuration that we defined in configuration settings that we define in the properties file, it will drop and recreate this table. So now if we go back to our console and refresh, we'll have to re-log in again, but it, all you should have to do is retype in admin. And ta-da, we have got a new, a new table here on the left, avatar. So if you click on it, it'll automatically populate um, a SQL statement, SQL statement in on the right that we can just hit run and it'll it'll try and select everything in the database which right now it's empty makes sense we haven't created anything yet okay so now to access that data we are going to create a whoops we're going to create a repository which is basically a um, it's an it's an interface to to work with the the database and getting access to our models. Okay, so let's do uh, we'll call it avatar repository. Okay, and we will give it a and we are saying it's an interface which I think it extends extends JPA oops, repository of type avatar and long okay so control period import that control period import that and hooray that's it so basically we're saying here that we want to uh, wrap our avatar uh, domain model and we have to specify the type of um, our type that our primary primary key is for our, our object which we've specified as long which is right here okay so that's where this long comes from so now uh, again it's restarted and um, we've already tested it through the web console so let's create a um, let's create our first controller okay so we'll create a controllers and we're gonna create an avatar controller okay pretty cool so we are going to create a rest 
you will use the rest controller annotation. Okay. And we are also going to use a handy dandy way of uh, referencing that through request mapping, the request mapping um, annotation, which lets us specify how we are going to how we're going to access our our uh, controller through the web browser um, or sorry through a a curl or postman request to our system so we're going to be going in through slash api and next we're going to be adding logging support equals logger factory logger and then avatar controller class Okay, we're just bringing in uh, logging support, control dot, and we want to be using S, okay, import SLF for J. Okay, and now let's also make use of another annotation called auto wired, which automatically hooks in our avatar repository whenever this controller is instantiated. Okay, so let's, as you can see, we got an error here because we didn't properly import this. Okay, now what we're gonna make first in our controller is a way to just get all of the rows in our database, all of the avatars in our database. And that's just a get all. So if the, the API request, the API URL will look like this, a get, oops, get slash API slash avatars. Okay, so we're gonna be using a get mapping and avatars. So get mapping is another handy annotation for uh, signaling to Spring Boot that this, is, this will be uh, mapped to a get request. Okay, we're gonna define a response status of just HTTP status, okay, whoops, always put in a, okay, so public list of avatar um, of get all. Okay, so what we want to do is return avatar repository find all. Okay, so let's clear up these. Okay, we want a Java util. status okay and what we want to do is I don't want to create a new one <laughs> okay what I want to do is bring in Or, or dot spring framework dot http http status okay so now it's going to restart nice so we've restarted on port 3000 okay cool and then now we are going to use um, curl at first And what we can do is curl dash, because I always forget, I think it's dash dash help. Yep, so we get our help, which there's a lot. There's a lot of output to go through, um, but we'll do curl um, HTTP localhost 3000 API avatars, which is what we've defined as our controller endpoint for listing all of our avatars. And you can see here we get an empty array, which is exactly what you'd expect. But if we go back here and look at the logs, we can take a look and see how the server mapped itself to this function. Okay, so we did a, um, it processed the get request to API avatars, 
which the system then mapped to our controller, avatar controller, get all function, which we've got right here. Um, and then it sets up the response body processor, which then it goes into the avatar repository, find all, which is just get me everything. Get me everything that's in the database, and then just returns that as a list, a list of avatar models. So we can go back here and see that it's an empty list, as you might expect. Okay, cool, we're getting somewhere. So now, let's add this, what we have. We'll add this into Git. So do a Git status, and it kind of sh it shows you what, what files you've modified from the last time you took a Git, a Git snapshot. And we'll use Git diff. And Git diff will show you what's actually changed within each of those changed files. Okay, so we can see that we've um, modified the application.properties with our updated configuration settings, and we've also added all those other, you know, um, avatar, data model, repository, and controller methods, or functions. So let's go ahead and add that. Um, oh, okay, cool. So what we forgot to do quickly here is um, it tried to add the database. And we don't want to store the database in source control. It's going to change every time we run this, this server. Um, so we want to actually ignore it. So if we open up a file called git ignore, that stores the, um, the specific files of things that you don't want to store in, in git. So we are going to ignore everything in the data folder, which is our database as you can see right here. So we'll be ignoring this avatar-api-mv.db, which is our H H2 file database. Okay, so let's try again. Okay. And this time we've um, created data model and controller. Cool, okay. So now let's go ahead and we will add a controller for creating, creating a new avatar. So this is gonna be done through a post. That's the, the rest operation for, um, that is usually used for creating a new object. So we'll do AVI. If you post to the API avatars endpoint, then you will be able to create a new model. So what we're gonna do first, just to walk through how we can uh, change this is created okay so public avatar um, create with no parameters and we're going to um, create a new model and we're going to return avatar repository save that model Okay, and let's bring in control dot to import that post mapping reference. So again, this is another spring annotation for handling the HTTP post request as, um, as specified there when you hover over um, these annotations. And we're gonna be returning a response status of created. Normally spring will take care of that for you anyway, but it's kind of fun to sometimes be explicit in what kind of um, status code we're sending back. Okay, so here we're just creating a new model and then we're saving it into the repository and returning it back out to in the response. So let's go ahead and save that. Let the database restart. Okay, and let's go, let's curl our, our get list again. And we've got an empty one, which, which you might expect. And let's go ahead and I think it's curl-x post HTTP localhost port 3000 API avatars. I hope this is the right one. Okay, so we're returning a empty object, but it's actually the one we want. Um, so if you look down here, You'll see here that when we it when our Spring Boot server mapped to the avatar controller create method, 
it knows that we want to send back some JSON, so it set up the necessary uh, response types, and then it processed um, this new avatar, and it's given it an ID of one. Uh, since we didn't specify a name or a type, uh, they're both null, um, with zero for health points and mana points, and then it returned a 201 created. So if we want to see it a little bit more um, visually, um, I like to make use of a tool called Postman. There's many other tools. Uh, Postman is certainly not the only one. There's a lot of other options out there for doing this kind of GUI, um, GUI handling of your API, GUI testing. So if we hit, hit the new, the plus for a new, we want to do a get request of HTTP localhost port 3000. And this will just show, I'll just show you what, what you'll see. Oops, which makes sense because we're the server's on 3000, but our API endpoint is actually on avatars, slash API slash avatars. So you can see we've got an empty list, which is what we would expect. Or sorry, we've got a one one object here because we've just created one through the command line. I don't think we created it properly because um, all we have here is an empty object. So we'll have to fix that. Okay, so next we're going to do a a post to the same endpoint and this should create a new avatar for us. Okay, so if we look ahead, if we say, um, if we send, specify a post request to slash API slash avatars with an empty body, we will get back a newly created object, a newly created avatar object with an ID of two in this case, uh, name null, type null, health point zero and mana point zero. And we look at, we can look at our log here that we see the same the same information. Okay, cool. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is sometimes or most times when you create a object, um, you have a date timestamp as to when that object was created. So why don't we go ahead and add one to our avatar? Oh, first we are going to let's go in our terminal and we're gonna add it to git. Oops. Um, okay, we are going to look at adding it, at, or not, we're going to look, we're going to add our modified files to git, um, and it, um, let's see, made create function, uh, request function, request handler. That's a better way of putting it. Okay, so now we're going to go back into our our avatar model here and we're going to add a date created. So we're going to tag a getter and setter with a private instant date created equals instant dot now. Okay, so let's control dot that import instant from java.time. Okay, so now if everything goes right, let's see, date created equals plus date created plus slash plus. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And then now when the server restarts, if we do a post to slash API slash avatars, we should get a one. And now we'll see that we've got a new day created field. Excellent. Hopefully that, um, let's see, is there a way to, oh. oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, this is a much better way of doing it. Okay, and, but where's the create button? Oh boy, that's way over there. Oh, okay. Hopefully that's big enough for you and you can see it. Okay, so let's let's do this again. So if we do a get, a get request to slash API slash avatars, it's gonna look at, it's gonna uh, return everything that's in our database, which right now is just one record. Our ID of one, date created. Okay, so we wanna send some parameters. So let's do a post to avatars and in our request body, let's go ahead and specify a name of Slardy Bartfast 
and then type and let's say he is a wizard okay now let's go ahead and send that and so now we look at that we've created a new record ID of two with the name Slidy Bartfast and a type wizard and date created right now right on that's pretty cool okay um, so now what do you think will happen if we only specify one out of two of them okay so let's say we want to create a new one called um, let's say Opaloria and not specify a type so we get a type of null a new record with the name Opaloria a type of null and our date time date created timestamp right there okay so what happens now if we just do a type and let's say paladin we want to create a new paladin we've got a new record created with the name of null and a type paladin okay so we can still uh, generate any any object we want um, we, we're not specifying yet what we need to have in, uh, requ required fields that we need in place um, just that we're able to pass anything and it'll use that for the creation of our avatar okay so now let's go ahead and look at creating a, a way to edit or update those update those that object update the avatar so let's create a get or sorry um, let's create a put so a put request is part of the um, uh, the CRUD acronym which is which takes care of the U update so we're gonna want to take in um, an ID of the avatar we want to update and then the field and new value of what we're trying to update so let's jump into the code and go back into our uh, controller method and let's do a put slash API avatars or I guess before we do that we are going to do a get okay so what we want to do is we want to get a single a single avatar avatars and then the ID ID of the specific avatar we want to pull out from the database so let's specify a get mapping and an avatars with an ID Okay, and then we want to create a public avatar um, get one we can call this function these functions that we write in here by the way we can you can call them anything you want um, it doesn't have to be get one it doesn't have to be create doesn't have to be get all it can be anything you want to you want to call them um, so let's create or let's get one sorry and then we want to make use of the path variable annotation to signal that we are looking we're expecting a a long ID being passed into the method okay um, and then we are taking a uh, a way to access the repository is this time we have to use an optional wrapper of our avatar type so we're going to specify a model um, of null for now but then what we're going to do is model equals avatar repository find by ID and we'll pass in the ID that we're sending okay and then we're going to be um, this, this for this first method or the first time we write this we're going to just be returning model.get since we want to peek into what's in this optional optional mapping okay let's clean up these references save okay we'll let the service restart and then what we'll do here is we'll post to okay and we've got a, a name of one. Oh yeah I forgot that we had a palette in there that doesn't matter so we've now got one record let's go ahead and create another one let's call it a wizard so now we should have two two in there and so if we get all then we should have two records here and so what I want to do is get the second one so slash API avatars two and ta-da we've got our second record now what happens if we just specify 200 
of which we know there's not a, an, a record with a, an ID of 200 in there. Boom, it blows up. No such element. So let's handle that a little better. So let's go back into our function. Um, first, let's add this to git. Um, first writing of get method. Okay, um, so let's go back in here. And so what we want to do is we'll put a, we'll change the return type to a response entity of of dynamic. So that's a question mark. So it can be a, a type avatar or it can be something else, um, um, which we'll just show in one second. Okay, so we'll use a method in our optional wrapper called is present. So if our model is present, which means we found it in the database, then return new response entity um, of avatar model.get and then HTTP status, okay. Cool, okay, so otherwise we didn't find it. So let's return an error. So let's return new response entity and just not found or like that and then HTTP status uh, not found. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and restart it. And so if we get an, an avatar of, with an ID of 200, if we attempt to get it, then what we should see is instead of 500 eternal server error, it should return a 404 and an empty, bot, an, uh, an empty response. So here we go, empty response and a 404. And now let's create one to make just make sure that nothing nothing broke there. Okay, so we've got one with an ID of one. And if we get with an ID of one, we see a one. Okay, perfect. That is exactly what we want. Okay, so now let's go back and let's add that to get updated get handler for error handling. Okay. Now at last we can get to our updating. So let's update a put request to slash API slash avatars slash ID. Um, so again, we'll use a handy put mapping uh, slash avatars slash ID with the squiggly braces around the ID. And we're gonna public response entity. We're gonna do that same uh, dynamic response type, update one. And we're gonna make use of our path. So make use of everything. So our path variable of ID, which is a long, a long type. And then also a request body avatar, new avatar. Okay, and so let's resolve this. Import put mapping, okay, that looks good. Um, and now, so we'll, we'll cut and paste this first little bit here. Okay, from our get. So we're grabbing, we're looking for the model within the database with that ID that we passed in. If the model is present, then instead of this, let's do some things first. So first we have to update, update, the, um, update the record with our new avatar information. So model set name and new avatar get name. And then model set type, new avatar get type. Okay. And oops, we have to get access it, that which is within our, our optional. Okay. Um, okay, so by default, if there's nothing there, then we want to return the same 404 not found. So if there's any errors, 
boom, 404. Okay. Um, I guess what we could do is if there's an error, uh, anyway, we won't go into error handling uh, too much just yet. Okay. So first what we want to do is, um, so we, we've updated our records here, or updated our record with um, what we're passing into the method. Now what we, we want to do, instead of returning it right here, what do you think is going to happen here? All we're going to be doing is returning a returning the record from um, that we're accessing in the database, but we're not we're not saving we're not saving this update that we've made. So now the next time we make use of this record, it'll have this old data. So first we've got to use avatar repository. We got to wrap this method with a save a call to save. Okay. So now, um, okay, that looks like we got everything. Okay, so let's, did that restart? Did that finish restarting? Okay, well, we'll find out in a minute. Okay, so let's post to avatars and we get a one. Okay, so we've got a name of null and type wizard. So why don't we go ahead and add a name? So let's change our uh, request type to a put and we're updating our first element and we want to type in a name of um, not slarty bart fast how about arthur okay and he is a thief so let's go ahead and send that in and look at that we've updated our id our record to of id1 with the name arthur and type thief okay so now we have a, a way of updating, updating our object. Um, now, usually in just about every kind of database or system that you work with, not database, every system that you work with, you want to not only keep track of when the record was created, but also when it was last updated. So why don't we go ahead and create that now? Uh, let's go back into our code. Let's go back into our model and we will create a another getter and setter for date modified instant. The default value will be what whenever this record was instantiated. Um, date modified. Okay. So date created and then date modified date, oops, not data, date modified. Okay. So this will create a date modified. And then what we can do is in the controller, whenever we do update the record, let's also update the, um, uh, the date modified field. So if we do model, whoops, model dot get um, set date modified to be instant now. So basically whatever the current date timestamp is. Okay, and let's resolve the conflict there. Or resolve the import, sorry. Okay, um, so we're, we're putting it, we're modifying the date to now. Um, we don't need to do it in any other and any other one. Okay, so let's oops, rest request to get avatar with ID. Okay, and then we want to log.debug rest request to update avatar with ID. And then ID. Okay. Uh, so now we've updated our modified date. And let's go ahead and restart this. Let's see how it looks. Okay. So let's post to avatars. We get Arthur Thief, date created, blah, and date modified, blah, which is the current date timestamp. Pretty cool. Okay, now let's go ahead and update it. So we're gonna update our first record. Um, let's change 
we want to rate we want to uh, um, class change to a wizard or no let's go to a ranger Arthur is a ranger okay so we want to make a put request to um, slash one oops okay so now Arthur is a ranger and we can see that the date modified has been updated to the current um, date timestamp so now every time we update a property we get a new or we get the updated date modified timestamp which is pretty cool uh, that way you can keep track of objects as they're updated um, and speaking of objects being updated why don't we go ahead and look in the database okay so let's type in admin admin and we'll select star from avatar and we get our ID of date created, date modified, zero health points, zero mana points, name of Arthur, and type ranger. You know what? I'm going to blow this one up too. Okay, so just so that again, if we select the avatar table, whoops, select the avatar table and hit run, we get our ID of one, date created, of uh, the same timestamps that we have displayed here. GMT, maybe this is 0508 GMT when instant.now uh, works. Anyways, I don't want to get hung up on that too much. Uh, they are the same uh, date timestamps. I know it looks funny. It's just because of, um, I think one is using GMT and one is using your local, um, your local um, um, locale to uh, display the date time. Okay. Back to our code. So now, uh, oh, let's 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 try one experiment out. So we've got a put request, um, and oh, so now what we want to do is we want to delete. We want to take care of the last operation in our CRUD acronym, which is the D for delete. So we want to pass a um, an ID through the, re the web request. So delete slash API slash avatars ID. And this will be a delete mapping. And avatars squiggly bracket ID. And then public void delete uh, path variable ID, which is a long ID. OK, and then so what we're going to do is avatar repository delete by ID ID and that's it that's all we got to do that's all we got to do that's really simple okay so first let's go ahead and post create a new one Arthur Ranger okay date modified date created um, let's go ahead and create a few. Why don't we create a couple of them? Okay, so we've got four in there, and let's go ahead and create uh, or delete number three. How about that? So delete um, number three. Okay, and we're not sending anything back in the response, but we are seeing a 200 okay. So now if we do a, a get of the avatars, we should see one, two, and then four. Okay. Excellent. And then let's get this into source control. Get list. Or um, get status, sorry, not get list. Okay, get add and added support for delete. Okay. And that's pretty much all we've got today. Um, we went through and we created a avatar API, uh, a bare bones um, object to look at a name and uh, sort of class type. So like wizard, thief, paladin, druid, ranger, as well as uh, some basic CRUD functionality on accessing them through a web server. I hope you all really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun today. Uh, we went through quite a bit. We showed off the H2 console. Um, as well as ha some handy debugging tips uh, within Visual Studio Code to speed up the process of restarting the server when we update anything. And yeah, I think that's about it for today's episode. If you like what you saw, 
please comment please give it a like uh, it's it's the best way to help help out my videos with the YouTube algorithm and we'll see you next time leave a comment of what you want to see next and we'll see you next time thanks everybody